Say cheese. <laughs> Firefighter Brooke Lindman was lucky to survive the Harris Fire. She was badly burned when the fire engine she was in was overrun by flames. And then hit us from right here. I was burned from ear to ear, across my face. Uh, the worst of it being um, the right side of my face and the right side of my back from where the windows blew. Lindman was in such intense heat for so long that she also suffered burns to her lungs. When she arrived at the burn unit at UC San Diego Medical Center in Hillcrest, her airways started to close. So this is our burn ICU. We can house eight patients. Dr. Jean um, Lee was on duty that day. She says Lindman was heavily sedated and put on a ventilator. Lee says people who suffer deep inhalation burns have to get their lungs suctioned out. These patients are sedated so heavily that they don't really cough very well. So we sometimes have to help them by suctioning out any secretions that develop because if you don't, those things can, um, if they get caught in the lungs, they can turn into pneumonia. Lindman also had to undergo daily scrubbings of her skin burns to prevent them from becoming infected. We do it about once a day, sometimes twice a day, depending on how bad it is, but it's at least once a day. And one dressing change for somebody who has a significant burn can take two to three hours. Lindman was released after three weeks in the hospital. Oh, there's me. What she didn't realize is that her recovery was just beginning. Lindman had to undergo a number of skin grafts and other surgeries, but that was nothing compared to the emotional and mental trauma. Lindman didn't feel like the same person anymore. I wanted to get back to my career, and I couldn't do that, so that was taken from me. I lost my career to the fire, and I didn't know who I was if I wasn't a firefighter. My grandfather, he brought me a McDonald's application. She also didn't know that she was suffering from PTSD. If you don't know anything about PTSD, you don't attribute it to that, and you're just, you're wondering why you're angry, and you're wondering why you're yelling at the people you love the most, and um, why you're shutting people out. Lindman discovered a bitter truth. As a burn survivor, she wasn't the only one who was hurt. Her family was, too. The Burn Institute really helped Lindman turn things around. The nonprofit group offers a host of services, including financial and emotional support for burn survivors and their families. And that's what a, a burn survivor needs, is support. Once you get past the hospital and the physical and you try and get back to life, um, that support system of people who know exactly what you're going through and what you're going to need, anticipating what you're going to need before you even know you need it. So this is one of the fundraisers they did, I guess. Lindman has also gotten involved with the Phoenix Society. The Phoenix Society for Burn Survivors helps us get back to living. A national nonprofit peer support group for burn survivors. I think I'm telling them the story or something. What's more, she's become friends with a number of other firefighters who suffered burn injuries. And we've all kind of taken this journey together, how to get back to life. For Lindman, getting back to life has meant getting her bachelor's and master's degrees from San Diego State. And she's found her new calling. They did a whole thank you to the firefighters. She wants to work as a counselor for first responders who've been burned on the job. Ideally, Lindman would like to work with her comrades at Cal Fire. This is December, so yeah, two months later. Lindman nearly died on that October Sunday 10 years ago. And today, she looks back with a fresh perspective. That day took so much from me, but what I didn't realize for many years later was that day gave me so many blessings. So m it, it changed the direction of my life to a place where I think I was always supposed to be. <laughs> Kenny Goldberg, KPBS News.